everyone, welcome to this week's YouTube video. This week we're going to be going over how to paint true metal metallic power swords. As always, I hope it's helpful. If you've got any questions, queries, please let me know in the comments below. I'll absolutely get back to you. As always, if you want to support the channel, feel free to check out the Patreon for more in-depth video tutorials, one-to-one -one tuition, and as always, I'm always available for commissions, so feel free to get in touch. Links are all in the description below. Here we go. So first up, what I've got is a black undercoated power saw. This is from the Grey Knights kit and I've painted on a scale 75 heavy metal silver. Ultimately, any silver will do, but it needs to be fairly bright because we are going to be making it darker as we go. The color that you can see me working with on the right is Valeo model color black at the moment. Now, what I'm doing is I'm thinning my paint down enough to break the surface tension. I don't want to thin it too much. The way to test this is, is if you get your paint and pull the brush away from your palette, what you'll find is you'll get like, like string You'll get like sticky string where the paint comes away. The idea is you want to add enough water for that to stop happening. So your paint needs to be relatively thick with this because you don't want it to dry too quickly. So we just want to break that surface tension of the paint. So I would probably say it's something in this case, something like one part water to maybe four parts paint in the case of Vallejo model color black. Different paints need different amounts of water so if you were to use p3 or gw for example you would probably need a lot less water now with this blade we are going to be wet blending what i am going to say is the whole video i've made a point of doing very poor wet blending it's not up to what can be done and this is intentional because i appreciate not everyone is particularly great at wet blending so i thought if i do it quite streaky and quite rough then it will kind of show that you can still get a good result if you're not particularly experienced with the technique. So I appreciate there's going to be a few people who are just going to turn around and say, well, you can't actually wet blend yourself. That's why you're saying this. Ultimately, first of all, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I can wet blend. Secondly, I don't pretend to be a master at this technique. It's not something that I use a lot. I don't particularly enjoy it. And thirdly, I don't really give a crap. So get over it. Now, what you can see is I'm not worried about going over to the other side of the blade. We can easily clean that up later. And you can also see how streaky my paint is when I'm doing these transitions. Again, I'm doing this to prove a point. It's going to get smoothed out more later on. And also what you need to remember is, is if you've got a finish that's not particularly great, you can actually make it end up looking like it's a little bit more worn than a perfectly polished blade. So there are a lot of uses for even badly done wet blending, which is what this is in this case. Now I'm using the Vallejo model color black. I'm placing that black on the blade like you can see now. Now the point is this, this black paint does not want to dry. So when, that when the black is on that blade, I'm then without washing my brush, getting some of the heavy metal, scale 75 heavy metal silver, and I'm placing that on the blade and then I'm using a sideways brush stroke motion and I'm pushing it into the black paint and then pulling it back out. And what this is doing is ultimately is we're mixing those two colors together. So it's given us something in between. The point of the black is basically what we wanna do is remove the shine. The, I try not to be biased here. Everyone knows that I'm not particularly a fan of true metal metallics. I prefer non-metal metallic. It's just a, a, a preference. There's no right or wrong. But the idea with this is, is if we have pure metallic paint, it's going to look shiny everywhere whenever we change it. What I'm trying to do is remove some of that shine in certain areas. So the acrylic, because the black paint is not a metallic paint, the black acrylic paint is going to remove a lot of the shine in those areas. And you can see all I'm doing is separating the blade either side of the blade into four parts it goes silver black silver black on either side and they're opposite so where there's black on one side of the blade there's going to be silver on the other that's the rule there are four there are far more interesting ways to do this but as this is a supposed to be something which could be quite nice for armies i've kept it very simple and just alternated where the highlights are I think it's also worth adding the silver paint in this case has got a small amount of water added to it. I've added a tiny amount of water just to break the surface tension in the paint. But I don't really want to thin it down too much because metallic paints start adding, start behaving really weird 
and separating when we add too much water. So all of the paint at this stage is quite thick. If you are better at wet blending, then you'll get a nicer result. But what you can see on screen at the moment is I've got this very rough, almost dirty looking transitions. That's fine. That's what I'm going for at this point. We're going to work over this. The next thing that we need to do is get the edge highlights in. Metallic surfaces nearly always catch edges. And in this case, it helps to frame the blade. So it's really important. Now, what I would say is when you're doing the edge highlights on this, you want the, if you use the side of your brush and you use towards the middle of the brush, the middle of the bristles is fatter. So you're going to get a wider mark or it's much harder to get a thin edge highlight. So what I would recommend is you use closer towards the tip of your brush. I haven't been overly careful with this again because I've done this really quickly. But if you're struggling to get a nice edge highlight, especially along the center of the blade, use the tip of your brush. So you use the side of your brush, but closer to the tip and it will give you a much thinner controlled mark. And this is the edge highlight with just the heavy metal silver from scale 75. Worth noting, the Scale 75, you can use whatever paint you want. I just have a preference for Scale 75 metallics when I need to use them. The colour you can see on screen now is P3 Cygnus Blue. And I'm thinning this down absolutely loads. So you can see how thin this paint is. I'm removing the excess from my brush. And then you can see how transparent that paint is on the wet palette. So I want something really transparent. P3 Cygnus Blue probably five, six, maybe even seven parts water to one part paint. The thinner it is, the more layers you're going to have to do, but the thinner it is, the more control you're gonna have because you build up more layers and you can stop as you go. Now, the idea with this is the power weapon at the moment looks very boring. Well, at least it looks boring to me. If you like it, then do whatever you fancy. But we need to start smoothing out the power blade a little bit and we wanna start getting some color into it. Now I'm thickening up this paint, you can see. So I'm just adding a little bit more paint purely because it was a little bit too thin. Now it was too thin for me. I didn't want to spend that much time painting loads and loads of layers. So I thickened it up. But as I said, too thin is better than too thick. The idea here is I'm glazing over the whole of the power weapon. So I'm using an ultra thin paint with very little on my brush. And I'm painting over the whole of the power blade. What this is going to do is one, it's going to start smoothing out all of those dodgy marks that we've got on the power weapon. And two, it's going to tint the blade color that we choose. So in this case, I'm tinting it blue. So it's going to give us this nice blue steel look. We'll also notice that generally my paint stroke, my brush stroke ends towards a shadow. It ends towards the darker area. That's because wherever we remove our brush, generally it's going to leave a deposit of paint. So we want to hide that in the darker area. Now, what we need to remember with this, the I'll get to that in a second. This is Vallejo model color of beaten purple. Sorry, this is P3 beaten purple. Exactly the same process as the blue here. I've thinned it down to maybe six, seven parts water to one part paint. You want it ultra transparent. And I'm glazing over to get some different color. So in this case, I'm getting some purples and some blues and I'm just playing with color to get some nice light reflective tints to it. So what we need to remember with this is when you're going over the black with this blue and purple, although the impact is going to be minimal, it is actually going to brighten it up because the purple and the blue is brighter. When you go over the silver, first of all, it's going to make the silver darker. So you're going to lose some of the brightness, which is fine because we're going to come back to that later. More importantly, we're going to lose metallic effect the more color the more paint you put over that metallic silver the more of the metallic shine you are going to lose that is intentional at this point we're going to bring it back but it's something to think about and be careful of if you put too much color if you go over it with too many layers sorry you're going to lose the metallic shine so just stop when you're when you like the result now you can see that i've done exactly the same thing as i did with the previous colors glazing in some black so again ultra thin paint this paint is thinner than the other uh, colors because Vallejo model color is a more opaque paint this was probably eight nine parts water to one part paint so I'm altering the consistency or the amount of water that I'm adding to my paint based on the paints that I'm using so the idea of this is, is again I'm starting that brush stroke from the brighter areas and ending it into the darker areas 
And what I'm doing is I'm just smoothing out some of those more questionable brush marks from all the wet blending. Now, it's worth noting that I haven't sped this up. This, this video is done so effectively live. I haven't sped the footage up at all. So what that means is, although it may have taken about 10 minutes to paint this power sword, if you were to do 10 of them all at once, it would be much, much faster. So it would probably take me maybe half an hour to do 10 of them. So it is quite a fast and effective process. Now what we're doing, I've gone back with the heavy metal silver. The reason for this is, is remember when we've gone over with all these colors, we've lost the true silver because it's been tinted with other colors. So first of all, I'm doing those edge highlights again, because the edges are going to be the brightest areas. And what I'm also going to do is go into my brightest points on the actual flat of the blade itself. And I'm just going to paint on some little brush marks with the heavy metal silver to brighten up the actual bright spots and remove some of the color. You'll see that here. You'll also notice like I'm not doing a, using a particularly great brush. It's got a nice point on it, but the brush is pretty much knackered. You can also see I'm not really being very precise here. I'm just doing lots of little marks. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can't stress this enough. This is not, this is going in an army. It's not going to be going into Golden Demon or a display piece or anything like that. It will look great and striking from far away. And you can see as I turn it, I still have a nice metallic shine, but the dark areas make that metallic shine pop even more. You can see I've just gone back here and I'm going back over with the blue because it didn't have quite enough color. So I'm just glazing over again with some blue to add some interest to it. And that's pretty much the process for this. Personally, I think they look quite nice and they look really good across an army. Now I'm going to skip to another blade. This is a second one. This is where I've already done the wet blending. And I'm going back with the colors. And the reason why I'm doing this is I just wanted to show you what happens if you use different paints, if you use different colors to get different results. So with this particular blade, I've started off with the left hand side and I'm glazing over the blue as we did previously. I think you can use pretty much any colors. Remember the, the colors that you see in, in a silver blade is generally speaking gonna be the colors that are reflecting around it. So anything works. I think blue is a very traditional, easy one to understand for us to, especially from our army perspective. If you see it from our, far away, it just looks like a blue steel reflecting the sky or something like that. So that's a very safe choice, but you can do all sorts of stuff like the last one where I played with the blue and the purple. Again, that's quite safe because the purple doesn't stand out too much. Now with the right hand side, I decided to play with some different colors. So in this case, I started using P3 Cygnus Yellow. Remember, paint consistency is roughly the same with all of these paints when I'm glazing. It's like five, six, maybe seven parts water. I want a nice transparent mark. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, I decided to try some yellow just to show it off. I didn't personally like it, but there's nothing wrong with it. If you like it, then go for it. So I've glazed over the yellow and you can start to see that it gets this nice, almost greenish tint. And the reason why it starts to get the green in it is because the black has blue. The, the black has got a little bit of blue in it. So it, it adds, it kind of changes as you glaze over. Remember, whatever you're glazing this color over tints what's underneath. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up. So the top right of the blade at the moment is having the purple glazed into it. Bottom right of the blade currently has the yellow being glazed into it. The left hand side has the blue. Now what's going to happen in a second is I'm going to start mixing these colors over each other. So the yellow, I'm going to start glazing over the blue areas. This is going to turn it green. When I glaze the purple over the yellow, it starts to kill the yellow because they don't mix very well. And the whole point of this that I wanted to show you is there's no, you can't go too far with these colors. You can't do anything wrong. If it doesn't work for you, you can just keep glazing over it with another color. So this is the point where remember the glazing side is when you're fixing or improving how whatever condition your wet blend has been done. So however good your wet blend is, glazing is when you start smoothing out those questionable marks that you might have. So you can't really go wrong with this. Just keep glazing over and eventually it will disappear. At first it might be a little bit difficult, but what you need to remember is ultimately the more you do this, the faster it will get and the better the result that you will get. So you can see in the top left where I've glazed the yellow over the blue, that started to go green. I actually quite like that. I really like the green tone to it. 
bottom right has the yellow, which I'm not overly a fan of. You can see that I'm just adding these in, adding in these edge highlights again. Sometimes I do this not just when I'm finished, but when I'm halfway through. If you add your edge highlights when you're painting metallics, it gives it frame. Like I said, it gives it readability, makes it very easy to see from far away as well. But when you're halfway through painting, what you can do is it can give you a really good idea of can give you a really good idea of what this is going to look like in the end. Because I say this a lot: when you paint stuff around something, it changes how that object actually looks, and this is no different. Especially if you're struggling to get rid of, if, you're, if your transitions aren't as nice as you want them to be, before you make a decision of starting again or keep working them, paint in your, in your edge highlights because it will hide some of the transition and make it look better than it is. I mean, you guys saw how poor my wet blending was done on these blades. So it, you can fix nearly anything, ultimately. The next little trick that we can go over to hide some more transitions that you're not particularly happy with is assuming that your character is not like in parade or posing, you would assume that he's been in battle or she's been in battle. So what you can do is add some marks and scratches to the blade, especially across areas that don't particularly look right. If you've got some, as I say, if you've got some dodgy transitions, now this is relatively nice and simple because what you can do is add a few marks with the heavy metal silver going across the blade. Now you're not really going to see those in the bright area where you've got the silver, but in the shadow area it makes quite a big difference. So if you've got a bit of a dodgy transition where the silver transitions into the black, by putting like a scratch going across it, it will mask that quite a lot. So if you've got a really nice effect, but there's a couple of areas that you don't like, just put a scratch across them. The other thing is, is if you want to, at the moment, the blade has a very nice, crisp, sharp edge highlights. You don't actually need that. So you can see me going along and tapping the sides of the brush with the side of the sword with the side of the brush. This is breaking up how clean the edge highlight is and it's making it look like it's a little bit more like it's got chips and dents out of it. Add some visual interest, but more importantly, it's a decent opportunity to hide anything that you're not particularly happy with. I appreciate that when we do these YouTube videos and we get these results, sometimes it's very difficult for people who are not, less, not necessarily so experienced to get the results that YouTubers and, and professional painters and that sort of stuff can get. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you how to hide some of those things and to show you that actually even if you're not particularly experienced with certain techniques such as wet blending, you can still get a relatively nice result. So the last bit is at the moment, this blade looks really naff to me. I don't like it at all. I don't like the yellow. There's not enough color in it. So nice and easy to fix. In this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the blue, which I was using before, and I'm just gonna glaze all over the blade until it tints it to a color that I like. So all of that work that we've done before with the purples, the yellows and the blues, ultimately what we're going to do that is we it's a bit like erasing it because we're not really going to be using it anymore, but we're using it as a foundation for what colors are now going over it. So although I'm glazing blue over all of this blade, the yellow underneath is going to tint that blue green and the purple underneath is not really going to do much. It's just going to make the blue darker. So, even though I've done something that I don't like, I can still just work over that paint with more color. I know it's not gonna influence the blade that much itself because it's just gonna smooth out some of my marks. And I'm not bothered about the colors that I've already put underneath it because it's just going to mix with those colors. In this case, with the yellow, it's gonna turn it green. And remember, the more glazes, the more layers of that thin paint that you put over this blade, the more color it's going to add. So. If you wanted a really strong blue or a really strong blue, just keep putting more layers over. All you've got to do is keep adding those layers of paint until you've got a result that you like the look of. Remember, there's no right or wrong with this. Anyone who tells you you're doing something wrong with your miniatures should be questioning what they themselves are doing. There's no right or wrong. Yes, there are easier ways of doing things and yes, there are better ways of doing things, but there's never a wrong way. If you like the result that you've got, then that's absolutely spot on. 
And you can see how this blade is changing now. We've got a nice blue blade with some green tints to it. And these are the two swords together. You can see as I turn them, the dark areas are staying dark. The light areas are light, but they do get a little bit darker when we move them away. So it gives a really nice effect. Whether you like it or not is entirely up to you. I don't do this particularly often because I do prefer non-metal metallic. It's just a personal preference. You can also see the difference in the blades. The left one is the one with the purple and the blue. The right one is the one where we use the yellow. And you can see that that blade has got hints of blue, but it's mostly green. It's... As I said, there's no right or wrong. It's personal preference, whatever you like. But hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you get an idea of what you can do with metallic paints. Someone asked me recently in one of the chat, the, the, the comments asking about using inks. Instead of using P3 paints, because you can use any paints that you want, you could use inks to do this. Just make sure that you thin them down quite a lot because inks are quite potent. That would be another option. But as always, I hope this video is helpful, guys. Um, if you've got any questions, queries, leave them in the comments below. And thank you once again for everyone who's supporting because it means a huge amount. And um, I'll catch you later.